What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, it's going to be a quick one because we're going to go over what well, I'm going to give my feelings on the whole steel side bottom COVID thing. So let's run that intro, jump straight into it. So we're just gonna literally jump straight into it this time. Um, I just wanted to make a video talking about what's going on with side bottom done, how it affects the team, um, and stuff like that. Talking about his, you know, sanction and stuff. So let's just do it right now. So side bottom uh, after the game on Friday, side bottom and done. They got an Uber to Jeremy House House. You know, just totally blew out his knee, won't be playing for like 12 months, they went to have a couple of beers with him. That's AFL COVID breach number one, getting an Uber, which they're not allowed to do. They stayed there for longer than two hours, and after they stayed there, um, Sidebottom got into another Uber and went to Daniel Wells' house. Now, Daniel Wells is a member of the Collingwood staff, but he is not in the 30 staff bubble that is allowed at the club. So that's his second breach, going to someone's house that isn't uh, approved. And his third breach for getting another Uber. Anyway, the next day, he was picked up by police officers at about 7.30. Um, and they drove him home because his battery was dead. And this is where the story gets a little bit, he said, she said. Because there's uh, articles going around now that are saying... That side bottom was found half naked, so it sounds like he went on a massive bender um, and he got picked up by the police, driven home, um, safe. And then the next day, on the Sunday, is when Dunn and side bottom reported to the club that they did what they did. Um, and side bottom has no recollection of what happened, so you can clearly see that he got, you know, pretty much blacked out drunk or blotto drunk. Um, and then that's where. It brings us to today. So like I said, the club was notified on Sunday. Everyone knew on Sunday. The story only broke yesterday. Um, and then there was umming and ahhing. What's going to happen? Is it one, two, three, four, five, six week suspension? I personally thought it was only going to be a two week suspension. I knew it wasn't going to be one week for side bottom because he did break a lot of the AFL COVID protocols. So it ended up being a four-week suspension for side bottom and a one-week suspension <clears throat> and a one-week suspension for Lyndon Dunn. Let me just get one thing out there: they broke AFL COVID protocols, not government COVID protocols. Because at this time, before these new lockdowns in Victoria, you're still able to go to you know a mate's house or catch an Uber and stuff. So they did break AFL protocols for COVID. So the suspension, four weeks and a week. Lyndon Dunn, a week, fine, take it, see you later. Steel side bottom, four weeks. So what that tells me is what side bottom did is worse or just as bad as a couple of these other things. Connor McKenna tested positive for COVID-19. He got a one week suspension, supposed to be quarantined for two whole weeks, but instead he is playing on Friday night against the Pies because he gets released early from quarantine. So obviously another set of rules for him. But with this kind of thing is that he had COVID, he contracted COVID and sure he was asymptomatic or whatever, but he went to training and stuff like that. So he put at risk the whole of the Essendon Football Club. Copped a week. Okay. Second, Lucky Hunter at the start of the season got drunk Drove drunk, crashed into parked cars, and fled the scene. He got a four-week suspension. Side bottom four weeks for this is just ridiculous in my opinion. And it's frustrating because, yes, he did the wrong thing, but is that worth seeing a mate who's been sick, you know, one of your best mates at the club, maybe going to Danny Wells was a bit excessive, but was that worse than endangering lives while you're drink driving in a car, you know, smashing park cars and then fleeing from the scene? No, of course not. Connor McKenna, you know, I'll bring this up again. He copped one week 
and he could have given it to the whole of Essendon. Sidebottom didn't go to training because it was the weekend. So, you know, I just think two weeks, fine, but four weeks, give me a freaking break, please, AFL. They want to, you know, use Collingwood as this precedent, as this benchmark, um, but we were never going to win. If he had got two weeks, not harsh enough. Four weeks, too harsh. You know, where's where's the Goldilocks punishment for this? There isn't any. So it's a it's a lose lose. It's a double edged sword anyway. Now onto Sidebottom himself and how this affects the team. So Sidebottom did the wrong thing. He knew he was doing the wrong thing. Deserves all the punishment that he's getting. Maybe not the four weeks, but does deserve punishment for it. I'm really upset because he is vice captain. He is. A leader of the club, you know, we're all doing the right thing as supporters and staying home and, and stuff like that. Um, even though that doesn't really have anything to do with the situation because the AFL protocols are different to the government protocols, as mentioned previously. But still, it does hurt to see a little bit. Um, but in saying that, I... <sighs> You know, he's, he's apparently he's remorseful. Of course he would be. He knew he was doing wrong. You know, take the punishment and, you know, just come back in four or five weeks and be stronger, be smarter, uh, and just help the team out because we know it's going to be a hard season. Uh, and we need all the A-list players that we have firing on all cylinders. Positives, though. Depth. D-E-P-T-H. Depth. With side bottom coming out, that means someone has to come in. So, do we finally see the return of the bear, Braden Sire himself? People will say Adam Trelaw can come in for side bottom straight swap. No, people don't say that. No, I want to see the bear come in. Ads can come in 100%, but he can come. But Tyler Brown can come out, or you know, someone else can come out. I want Ads in 100%, but I also want someone else in, and I think Sire is ready to go to that next level this year. you got to remember that last year he came in, sorry, 2018, he came in when I think Trelaw went down and he came in because of injury and he just smashed it all the way through to that grand final. So I feel like Sire is the right man for the job and we definitely need him. That big body can win the ball, can bulk him away. He hasn't got Dane Swan's number for no reason. He is going to be a clone of Dane Swan if he's given a run. If we don't give him a run this year, we will just watch him walk out of the club and he'll go to an Essendon or a Bulldogs or a St. Kilda or someone that's going to give him first team football, which is what he needs. Can Sire and Wills play in the same team? Of course they can. They'll play different roles, you know? But Sire needs to be in this team. Sure, we do have a lot more midfielders that we can um, that we can play or we could take out side bottom. We can bring in a a Quain or and put Chris Main onto the wing, you know what I mean? Instead of that half back sort of role that he's kind of been playing. Or we take out Cyborg and bring in another tall or there's a lot of things we can do, but I do want to see Sire and this will be good for our depth. Maybe Bianco comes in, Rantel comes in. There's a lot of positives that can come out from such a negative situation. So we always have to look at the positives. Anyway, Swoopers, that's been my quick video. A lot of my thoughts um, about this whole side bottom thing, some positives, Keep positive, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets, and until next time, double shackers, super you later.